I am going to be the greatest jobs president that God ever created. Remember that. And we will make America great again. We will make America great again. And we are going to make our country great again. And we will make America great again. In a stunning victory back in 2016, he became the 45th President of the United States, driven by his ambitious goal to make America great again. During Trump's term, the U.S. economy saw a major boost, unemployment hit record lows, and GDP growth soared. Now, he's back on the campaign trail, racing toward the White House for a third time. With a $5.5 billion real estate empire that includes iconic properties like Trump Tower and the Mar-a-Lago Resort, plus an impressive collection of private jets and luxury yachts, how did a billionaire without any political background win over American voters and make history? Can Trump pull off another upset and reclaim the world's most powerful office? Join the billionaire dynasty as we dive into this story in today's video. Donald Trump, the heir apparent. Born on June 14, 1946, in Queens, New York, Donald Trump was the fourth child of Fred Trump, a major New York real estate developer. 50 years ago, the Trump family already held millions in assets with rental apartment buildings spread across Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten Island. Young Trump grew up in a well-appointed 23-room home in the prestigious Jamaica Estates neighborhood. Despite his family's wealth, Trump started from the bottom within his father's company, even working low-level jobs. At 13, his parents sent him to a military academy after he began acting out at school. Trump chose to attend the Wharton School of Finance, one of America's top business programs, comparable to Stanford and Harvard. There he emerged as a natural successor to his father's business after his older brother, Fred Trump Jr., decided to pursue a career in aviation. Tragically, his brother passed away at just 43 due to alcohol addiction, a loss that led Trump to avoid alcohol and cigarettes for life. While still in school, Trump began working with his father, laying the groundwork for his real estate career. His straightforward, bold approach to business quickly set him apart. He was unafraid to take risks, investing heavily in ambitious real estate projects, and making his mark on the family company. In college, Trump undertook one of his first major projects, revitalizing a $5.7 million apartment complex. With an additional $500,000 investment, he and his father increased the occupancy rate of its 1,200 units from 34% to 100%, later selling it for $6.75 million. By the time he graduated in 1968, Trump had amassed $200,000. He soon took on more responsibility, managing his father's residential projects throughout New York City. At 25, he officially took over the family business, rebranding it from Elizabeth Trump's son to the Trump Organization. Under his leadership, the company shifted from residential properties in Brooklyn and Queens to luxury projects in Manhattan. Like transforming the aging Commodore Hotel into the glamorous Grand Hyatt, and constructing the 68-story Trump Tower on Fifth Avenue, his most iconic property. Trump Towers now stand in countries like India, Turkey, and the Philippines. In the 1980s, Trump expanded into hotels, and casinos in Atlantic City, New Jersey, acquired the Plaza Hotel in Manhattan, and purchased the Mar-a-Lago Estate in Palm Beach, Florida, converting it into a private club. For a time, he even owned an airline and a professional football team. Over four decades of leading the Trump Organization, this American billionaire has owned or managed over 500 subsidiaries, including hotels, golf courses, an airline, a professional sports team, and a television show, among others. Of these, as many as 318 brands carry the Trump name. Even former President Bill Clinton once referred to Trump as a master brander. Trump has attached his name to everything he says does and every place he appears. I was ridiculed for putting my name on buildings and casinos, but it was a marketing strategy. Most towers bearing the Trump name are rented out at rates above the market average, former President Trump stated. But success hasn't always come easily for this real estate tycoon. In 1990, 
the Trump Organization revealed staggering losses of up to $5 billion, with Trump himself teetering on the edge of bankruptcy due to a series of business missteps. Yet, during this critical period, the American billionaire managed to rebound, surprising the financial world with his dramatic comeback. Facing immense pressure from creditors, he fought to renegotiate terms to keep an unfinished project afloat. The Trump Taj Complau Casino Complex in Atlantic City, which had become a significant source of his financial struggles. In 1991, Trump had to relinquish 50% ownership of the Taj Mahal to the original investors in exchange for lower interest rates on his debts and extended repayment terms. Trump even declared bankruptcy twice in 1991 and 1992. From billionaire to heavily in debt, he has described those times as feeling worse off than a homeless person on New York's iconic Fifth Avenue. After years of effort, resilience, and his trademark boldness, Trump managed to turn things around and emerge from one of the toughest periods of his life. From that point, Trump's fortunes surged. In 2001, he unveiled the Trump World Tower, a 72-story residential skyscraper across from the United Nations headquarters in Midtown Manhattan. Around the same time, he began developing Trump Place, a commercial complex along the Hudson River. Trump also secured prime retail space within the Trump International Hotel Tower, a 44-story complex of hotel and condominium units at Columbus Circle. With hundreds of thousands of square feet of prime real estate in Manhattan, the American billionaire has built an empire that's admired throughout the financial world. Known for his often controversial statements, Trump is also recognized for motivational words that resonate with entrepreneurs and young people alike, such as, you have to think anyway, so why not think big? Before becoming president, Trump's net worth was estimated at $4.5 billion in 2016. His assets reportedly declined by $2 billion, down to $2.5 billion, over his four years in office. Yet, he remains the wealthiest president in U.S. history. Currently, according to Forbes, Trump's net worth has risen significantly, now standing at $5.5 billion. A TV star with the entertainment industry's highest earnings. Above all, Donald Trump has always thrived in the spotlight. Twice nominated for an Emmy, he's made guest appearances in popular TV shows and over 200 films, often playing himself in lighthearted cameos on hits like The Nanny, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Days of Our Lives, and Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps. In 1996, Trump joined forces with NBC to buy the Miss Universe pageant, growing it to include Miss USA, Miss Teen USA, and Miss America. Today, Miss Universe remains one of the world's most prestigious beauty contests. Then, in 2003, Trump became the executive producer and host of NBC's hit reality show The Apprentice, where he earned nearly $700,000 in the first season alone. That figure later shot up to $3 million per episode, making him one of TV's highest paid stars. Through The Apprentice, Trump cemented his reputation as a master negotiator with his bold, often polarizing style that kept audiences talking. Over 14 seasons, he made his mark with the iconic phrase, fired. You're, fi you're fired, you're fired. In 2007, he earned his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for his impact on American television. Beyond TV, Trump has authored 36 books including numerous bestsellers like The Art of the Deal, How to Get Rich, Think Like a Billionaire, and Crippled America, How to America Great Again. Conquering the White House and building the greatest economy in history. On June 16, 2015, Donald Trump officially threw his hat in the ring for the U.S. presidency. At his campaign launch, he argued that American politicians had made too many promises without delivering results. He pledged to take action vowing to make America great again and confidently declaring, I will be the greatest president in U.S. history. By May 3, 2016, Trump was the last Republican standing, having won 54 percent of the vote in Indiana and outlasted both Ohio Governor John Kasich and Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Then, on November 8, 2016, Trump stunned the world by defeating Democratic opponent Hillary Clinton, he made history as the first billionaire and businessman to become president and commander-in-chief with zero prior experience in politics or the military, 
The surprising win even led Singapore's Prime Minister Lee Hin Loong to comment, his campaign defied all expectations at every stage, and his journey ultimately led him to the White House. So, what made Trump such a magnet for voters? And who exactly were his supporters? Post-election data showed that Trump's base was incredibly diverse, spanning all ages and professions. They believed America had grown unsafe and that Trump would restore security. Many were drawn to his straightforward view of the world and his clear lines between good and bad. Supporters admired his celebrity and business success, but above all, they believed he could bring back the America they felt had been lost. And Trump did, indeed, create what he called the greatest economy in history, at least until the COVID-19 pandemic hit. After taking office in 2017, Trump inherited a growing economy from President Obama and extended it, sustaining the longest job growth streak in U.S. history. From his inauguration to February 2020, the U.S. added an average of 181,500 jobs per month. Unemployment dropped to a 50-year low of 3.5% just before the pandemic, with Black unemployment reaching a record low of 5.3%. Before COVID, American households saw the biggest income surge in over 40 years, with the median income hitting a record high of $68,700 in 2019, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. The poverty rate also dropped to 10.5 percent, the lowest level in nearly 60 years. Trump's term also saw a booming stock market, with the Dow, S&P 500, and Nasdaq hitting new highs over and over again. Under President Joe Biden, many economic measures suggest the U.S. economy has been robust during his term. This has shown up in the impressive recovery of the labor market over the past two years since the pandemic. As of May 2024, unemployment has stayed below 4 percent for 27 straight months, a streak last seen in the late 1960s, before nudging up to 4.1 percent in June. Inflation has slowed recently, with the latest consumer price index showing a 3% annual rate. Still, the surge in prices over the past two years has left a mark on consumers. Overall inflation is up around 20% since February 2020, just before the pandemic, an increase that's tough to ignore. Month after month, rising prices have eaten into Americans' earnings. It's a stark shift from the early years of former President Trump's term when real income indicators were on the rise. CNN spoke to several voters about how inflation has affected them. Ted Southworth, a retired executive from a truck manufacturing company, has felt the impact of inflation on his family, even though they're financially secure. Dining at nice restaurants has become a rare treat, and he and his wife decided to extend their car lease instead of buying a new vehicle. He's also concerned that prices could continue to climb, Southworth has faith in Republican candidate Donald Trump's economic approach, having voted for him in both 2016 and 2020. Under Trump, inflation barely moved. I don't think we have a handle on it now, he commented. Another interviewee, Becky Cantrell from Lando Lakes, Florida, has noticed the price hikes whenever she's at the grocery store. She recently stopped buying mayonnaise when it jumped to $7 and 88 cents a jar up from around $5 just a few years back. Since her husband passed away in November 2020, Kentrell has found it challenging to find work that pays enough to keep up with rising costs. At one point, she was working two jobs and even rented out a room to make ends meet. Although she recently found more stable work at a healthcare company, Kentrell still plans to vote for Trump this November. Everything was more affordable before Biden became president, she said. People aren't economists, they don't think like economists, looking at CPI changes and technical indicators," said Bernard Yaros, an analyst with Oxford Economics. They just noticed that a carton of eggs today costs a lot more than it did two years ago. Wall Street's strong confidence in a Trump victory. Billionaire investor Stanley Druckenmiller, who once managed funds for George Soros, believes Donald Trump is set to win the upcoming U.S. presidential election. Druckenmiller recently explained why he thinks the market has so much confidence in Trump's 2024 chances. For the past two weeks, it seems like Wall Street is betting heavily on Trump's win. You can see it in bank stocks. You can see it in crypto, he noted in an interview on Bloomberg Television. 
Bank stocks have had a strong week, with major players like Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citibank, and J.P. Morgan Chase showing positive year-over-year -year gains. Additionally, a new report from Chainalysis indicates that North America is leading the global cryptocurrency market, with an estimated $1.3 trillion invested in blockchain assets. When asked about his personal voting plans, Druckenmiller admitted, I definitely won't support either of them. After managing hedge funds for Soros, Druckenmiller went on to start his own firm, Duquesne Capital, in 1981. Reflecting on the current candidates, he described Trump as aggressive, but suggested that a Harris presidency could be bad for business. Druckenmiller also offered his thoughts on Congress, predicting that Democrats have a very slim chance of gaining control of both chambers, even if Vice President Harris wins. He hinted that another Trump term with a Green Congress could be the more likely scenario. Another former Soros associate, Scott Besson, recently shared his perspective on mornings with Maria on Fox Business. Besant argued that Trump's growth agenda sends a clear message to world leaders that he means business. I fully expect former President Trump to win again. I'll help in any way I can, Besant, now CEO of Key Square Capital Management, stated. But let's be clear, there won't be jobs if he doesn't win. According to The Wall Street Journal, betting odds also seem to favor Trump. Four Paula Market accounts have placed around $30 million in cryptocurrency bets on the former president winning the election this November. So, we've taken a look back at Donald Trump's remarkable journey from his early days in business to his conquest of the White House. He's shown that with bold vision and an unbreakable spirit, limits exist only if we let them. With just one day left until the election, do you think Trump will pull off another victory? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to Billionaire Dynasty for more insights and stories on the world's most influential figures. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.